we definitely have a lot, but for me personally, the most important piece of advice that I can give to someone who's supporting a lost parent is to never forget about my child. You know, talk about my child, call her by name. If you see something that maybe makes you think of her or me while I was pregnant with her, tell me about it. If when I was pregnant with my second child, make sure you remember to say that that's my second pregnancy, my second child. When Mother's Day rolled around, I was already a mother. Remember those things. Moving forward with holidays and with birthdays and milestones, just include my child in those milestones and those memories. That's the number one piece of, it, of advice that I could give because that has been the most important and the most helpful for me during this last year and a half since Mia has died. The narrative of our society of not wanting to upset somebody by asking them, we are already thinking about it. We're going through it. It is never not in our mind what we're going through. We are never not thinking about our daughter. So just make us feel good and ask about her. Ask about us, ask how we're doing, you know? Ask, are you doing anything for her Christmas? Are you gonna put a stocking out for her or for her birthday, are you gonna do anything? You know, just, just talk about her because we are already thinking about her. So you're not going to upset us more than we already are by losing a child, by mentioning her name. That will never do any harm by talking about her. And that was tip number one. And I'm Winter. And I'm Lee. And we're the hosts of Still a Part of Us. And this week we got to talk with our fellow lost parents, Lindsay and Cody, as they talk about their daughter, Mia, who was stillborn at 23 weeks. And they gave us some three, like three awesome tips on how to survive this grief journey as a lost parent. And then three tips for those who are supporting lost parents. So it is so good. We're excited. Now, if you get a chance to talk to a parent of lost, Say, say their kids' names. We do love to hear it. So Yeah, it's magic to our ears. It's music to our ears. Music to our ears. That's what I meant to say. <laughs> yeah. And here comes tip number two, and it's a very simple one. So if you're wanting to help uh, parents of loss, take a listen. Another big important um, piece for me that I have noticed since Mia died is, especially in the beginning, let your friends or family members who are experiencing loss, let them... It's hard to explain, but let them be in their grief and don't have expectations in return as far as communication or them being open. And what I mean by that is when I, when we came home from the hospital, I was obviously getting inundated with phone calls and text messages, people reaching out, offering their condolences, which was great. But then I would hear from my family members that certain you know, that other people might be upset that I'm not reaching back out to them or that I'm not getting back to them. And I understand that, you know, certain people want to have conversations about what happened and they want me to know that they're there for me, which I understand. And I, I really appreciate it at that time, but there were days where I didn't want to get out of bed. I didn't want to wake up. I did not want to do anything. So to think that I would want to have a phone call with somebody or to have to type out this long text message back to somebody. It was just, I think, so to summarize that, my advice would be reach out without the expectation of getting a response. You know, you reaching out is enough. All those messages and phone calls and voicemails that I received, that was great. And that was enough for me. You know, I didn't need to have two-way conversation for me to know that they were there for me. So I think that's a big that was a big piece of advice that I wanted to just get out there and reach out without the expectation. We found ourselves on the receiving end of this. Lee's mom is the best. She basically said to us um, when she would invite us to whatever party or get together that was happening after our loss, she said, we want you to come. We would love for you to come, but you are not expected to come. You do not have to come. If you want to come, you can even stay for just five minutes. And that was a huge lift off of my shoulders. It felt like a blessing to me. And then I had another friend who sent me a text message that I super appreciated. After getting hundreds, we got hundreds of text messages and she basically said, hey, we heard what happened. We are so sorry for what happened. We are praying for you. You do not need to respond to this text. That was huge. Like it was it's one less thing I had to do. And I was super grateful for the, she gave me permission not to have to respond back. 
Tip number three is one of my favorite things to talk about is things to say and things not to say to a lost parent. So listen up, this is important. When people say saying something is better than saying nothing. I agree to that to an extent. There are certain things <laughs> that you should not say. I have heard, you know, Cody and I are not religious people. We, you know, whoever wants to be, believe in whatever they want to believe, we are, you know, all for that. But it was hurtful for me personally when I would hear that this is what God would want for us. That just did not jive with what we were feeling. When people would say, everything happens for a reason. That could be comforting to some people, but it wasn't comforting for me. When people say, oh, you know, you got pregnant so easily, you can get pregnant easily again. Those are just callous things to say. And people think, I don't think people ever say anything with ill intentions, but some things can be just really hurtful and really just downplay what a lost parent has gone through. So honestly, if you're going to say anything, I just think the most important thing would just be to empathize or sympathize with, the, with what the person is going through, you know. Your feelings are valid. What you feel is what you feel is okay. It's okay to feel this grief. It's okay to not want to get out of bed. I'm here if you need anything. Just there's so many other things you can say other than everything happens for a reason. Or you can have more children. Don't worry. You know, just be tactful with what you say. You don't have to go through the ringer with thinking of creative things to say. It's easy as I'm sorry for your loss horrible that you're going through this and let me know how I can support you you know that's all you need to say and just be there for people show up for people there were people maybe one person whoever that said to her how great she looked after after she got home which is the last thing on earth that she wanted to hear because all she wanted to be was pregnant and that person was trying to compliment me you know they weren't mm -hmm. saying it in in any sort of malicious way and they weren't thinking of how it would make me feel but I heard that and I just thought what I would give to be huge and mm -hmm. pregnant right now and they're telling me I look great and to just kind of enhance on that point a little bit not entirely related to lost parents but it it can be if you know somebody who is pregnant and you don't know their history, don't say to them, you know, oh, it's about time or now I can stop asking when you're gonna have a child or even if the person is not pregnant and you think they might be trying or anything like that, don't make comments on other people's plans for family planning because you have no idea what that person went through. And to that point, if I go to the grocery store, the nail salon or whoever, wherever, and they ask me if I have children. That's a loaded question. You know, how mm -hmm. do I answer that question? Am I a bad mom for not saying I have two children? But then if they say, how old are they? You know, it's just difficult. So just to kind of circle back to what I was saying before about there are wrong things and right things to say, be tactful with what you say to people and don't overthink it. Just offer your support and just be there. And don't be, don't be nosy about other people's fertility or family planning. <laughs> kind of to piggyback on what she just said, there's going to be moments where people are asking you, the people who don't know you, who are going to say, oh, how many kids do you have? How old are your kids? Whatever it might be. You know, small talk, if you will, at a grocery store, wherever it might be. Don't beat yourself up if you, you have two children and one of them it was stillborn. If you say one, just to get the out of there. Don't beat yourself up for not getting into something loaded with somebody you don't know. You know, like that's something that really, I, I'm in phone sales. So like, I, you know, I talk to people all the time and they'll ask me how many kids I have. And it's like, they don't, they don't need, I don't need to go into my life story with this person. And I don't need to beat myself up about it either. When I say I have one son, you know? So it's like, that's one big thing that I, that I think it does take a toll on you. You might feel guilty about it, but don't because they don't know yet. Well, and to that point too, there have been scenarios where I have explained that I have two children. And then when they say, oh, how old are they? And I say, oh, we had a daughter who passed away. 
the conversation will abruptly end. That too. And then I get sad that, wow, they're not even interested to know my daughter's story or to ask what her name was. or So then you're just kind of let down. So when Cody says, don't feel bad in those scenarios, if you were to say only have one children or two children, if you had a third that had passed away, don't feel guilty for saying that because in a way you are protecting yourself from those conversations that might just let you down. I fully agree with this. Yes. Amen. <laughs> Lindsay and Cody gave us three awesome pieces of advice for those who have suffered a loss um, of a baby. And so, but before we get into that, we would love it if you have found some help in this video or in, in any of our other videos, please subscribe. It actually helps other parents find us um, who may need to hear some of these stories. Thank you. Thanks. In this tip, Cody is actually talking to mainly the fathers. And if you are experiencing something like this, listen up. Because we need help too. Uh, yeah, something a little bit different though. I'd say... Let yourself feel whatever comes because I didn't. And it was a, it was a train wreck because of it. So I'd say basically just you're, there's so many emotions you're going to have. And obviously this is probably geared more towards the, the dads because the moms, they have so many emotions that they, it's, I can't even imagine it, but um, just let your, if you're, if you're going to cry, cry, if you're not going to cry, don't do like, just let whatever comes up let it happen. Don't fight it. Don't put it off. Don't go back to work 16 hours a day because of it. Um, you know, you just got to, I'm not saying don't do that, but I'm saying like your body's going to tell you what's right and what's wrong and let it happen because I didn't. And it was, it was the worst thing I could have done. A, ma a major brick wall. Um, I'll never forget it. It was Sunday night football and it was the, the Saints are playing the Buccaneers. And, um, it was like halftime and I just felt like it just felt like there was a, these two walls coming in and they were going to collapse me inside of them in my head and in my chest, like such a wave of emotion. And this was in October. So this was three months after. Right. So I just felt like I couldn't be anymore. Like I couldn't breathe. I couldn't move. I couldn't. And all I wanted to do was go and just lay in bed because I knew I was safe there. So basically, just like I, I had put off my grief, taking care of my wife as much as I possibly could, that it just, it all came at one time, like a wave I, I've never experienced. I think it was a panic attack, realistically, but um, yeah, it was a wave like I, I can't even explain, and, and, and it just, it forced me to deal with it. So yeah, that was awful. I can't even, she was there for it. I mean, it was, yeah, it was, it was crazy. And just, I just laid down, and I tried to work on my breathing, and yeah, that was crazy. Absolutely crazy. I, I do fully understand. I fully un agree with what Cody said. Let yourself feel. Understand those feelings. And if you're having issues, go see a professional. Yeah. Don't think that you are too big or too strong. Everybody needs help. It's a great tip. Yeah. Lindsay is going to share with us a little bit of a tip that I really like because we don't talk about it too much, but when you lose a baby, two people lose a baby. It's the mom and the dad, and it's not just the mom. Unfortunately, the dads kind of get ignored, and, and so she talks about how you can support a spouse who is going through the same thing that you're going through while you're also kind of sad and depressed and kind of devastated. So I really super appreciated what her words were for this. Yeah, you know, it's funny because I always say that those first three months were mine. You know, after Mia died, those first three months of grieving were mine. Not to say that I'm still not grieving to this day, but those first three months were mine to grieve and Cody was there for me. And then to see your husband or your partner or whomever just struggle with the grief that is finally hitting them. I really think it was just honestly a maternal instinct that kicked in to try to do whatever I could to be there for him and to support him. And I suggested that he maybe go speak to a therapist or a grief counselor, you know, make sure you're talking to me about what you're feeling. It's important to talk together about our daughter and what happened to us because it was traumatic and no human being is equipped to deal with this kind of grief. So it's, a learning curve, you know, you have to learn together how to, how to grieve together and how to go through this together. So 
I think just being there and supporting him as best I could and the support that I thought he needed. I wouldn't say we we're on the other side right now, but I think, you know, we're working towards it and it's, it's been hard for sure. But I think the most important thing is just to be there for your partner or your spouse. Just let them know that they're not alone and that you're there for them and that you're going through similar grief, similar emotions, and just, you know, just be there for each other. Be vocal about what you need and don't be afraid to ask, this is what I need from you. You know, this is what I need right now. Just having open communication about the grieving process is the most important thing. In the moment, I just, I just, I think I just cried. I just, I just let it, I let, cause that's what, that's what wanted to happen. And my body was like, it's time to grieve and you're going to cry. So I just did. And I talked to Linz in the moment and, and just got it all out in the days after that, I, I wasn't in therapy yet. So I, you know, called a the therapist and left a message and, and they called me back and, and started it from there. And I think that that's, that's really what I've been able to do to help me with my grief since is, is uh, going to therapy and specifically we always talk about walking on eggshells. So it's like, if, if I'm feeling a certain way, maybe I can't ask Linz something, but I can ask my therapist that question and see what they think, if it's okay to bring it up to Lindsay, if I should or I shouldn't. And the answer is always, I should. Open book all the time when it comes to, you know, losing a child, because there's no moment of the day where Lindsay isn't thinking about it, or there isn't a moment of the day where she doesn't want to talk about it. So what I've also learned is, is that there could be good days and bad days, but talking about your child, you're not going to, you're not going to ruin someone's day by talking to me or Lindsay about it. And I've learned that and it's really great. And I, I kind of feel crappy because, you know, honestly being a man and traditional, like my, my friends were all in our thirties, like they don't ask me anything and I really wish they would. So like that kind of bothers me, you know, if I'm being honest. So it's like, I think it's advice, like if, if anybody listens to this who hasn't gone through this, ask your friends about how they're doing. And guys, remember, we could ask each other tough questions. Ask each other how we're doing and be sincere and be honest. It might get awkward, but it's it doesn't have to. Like it just like Cody said, it'll make you just closer. Now with this last tip, it can be simple or it can be as complicated as you need. Change of scenery. Be it walking around the block to complicated like changing jobs to even more complicated moving houses. They thought that it was a good idea to move. Well, you know, there was there was one big thing for us and that's we got out of that house. That's a big thing we did. Um, yeah, I don't know if that would be so much of I'm just saying I, I know it helped for us. So it's like if, if you never know. I mean it just it, it's yeah. like like if you need to change your environment, don't feel guilty about changing your environment. Yeah. If you want to start fresh in a new home or you know, if you can't go back to work because you were so safe, something happened, something traumatic happened at work while you were pregnant, you need to change your job or just, you know, your scenery. Don't feel guilty for doing that because Cody's absolutely right. We put our house on the market five months after Mia died. They told us how they moved houses and how they created a little corner for Mia. Yeah, she has her own little shelf downstairs with a uh, a little stuffed animal that my two girlfriends that I had discussed in my birth story, the two girlfriends who were pregnant with me at the same time, they got us a little stuffed animal named Mia and their daughters have the same stuffed animal. So, so we kind of tied that in together and then it has a picture of her feet, her ashes, and just some little, you know, other little memorial decorations that we've accumulated over the last year. And we walk by it all the time and we say goodnight to her every single night. So. Yeah. And now that they're, it's Christmas time. So we have an ornament for her on the Christmas tree. She has a stocking on our fireplace. So yeah. Yeah. I don't know what's, what's sorry. I, I don't know what's right or wrong in terms of, I just think of things in, in terms of how my grief was and having that little corner. Every time I walk by it, I say hi. Every night we say good night. And I feel like for me, because of the three months I had where I didn't grieve, it's kind of, forcing me quote unquote to keep her in my life every single day emotionally because my my, my mind might tell me if you put it away you're not going to feel sad but it's like it's so important for us to, to for her to be part of our life every single day but it's also you know because it, because it's important but also it's it's healthy 
for, for me mentally. It helps me grieve every single day because I'm never going to forget about this. So I think that's something that, that families could really do. Not like when you say, get out of the house, but don't still have a place, you know, for your, for your child to keep her in, him or her in your life every single day. Cause it's, I think it's helped me emotionally more than anything else. We'd like to thank Cody and Lindsay for coming on and giving yes. us their advice. And if you'd like to see their birth stories, click here.